Coming up on ATV News, the presidential debate heats up. Find out who came out on top. Vandalism found on your campus. We'll show you why one of your homecoming events could be canceled. And a long-standing tradition involving two USU professors and one sandwich. Football struggles, but soccer surges. I'll have all the details coming up in your ATV Sports Report. The weather's looking pretty great right now, but our ponchos in your forecast coming up on ATV Weather. It's all coming up on this week's ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Carly Lichty. And I'm Kelsey Keller. Election day is drawing near, but before that comes the thrill of hearing candidates fight for the seat in the Oval Office. Wednesday night was the first of three debates in which President Barack Obama and Republican candidate Governor Mitt Romney went head to head on the nationally televised event. The debate took place in Denver, Colorado and focused solely on domestic issues, most importantly the economy and health care. Obama boasted his creation of five million jobs in the private sector over the past 30 months, while Governor Romney responded by saying his focus lies on the creation and support of small businesses. We asked a few viewers here in Logan what they thought. Neither side won the debate regarding my issues because Obama's record has been really plagued with a lot of problems and Romney has flipped more times than a skateboard. Romney definitely won the debate. He just outperformed Obama. He was a lot more confident. If you missed the debate, the next one is on October 16th. The vice presidential debate between Joe Biden and Paul Ryan is tomorrow at 7 p.m. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints held the 182nd semi-annual general conference this past weekend. And while many of the teachings heard by church members could be considered pretty standard, one announcement in particular wasn't. It's a moment members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will likely remember forever when President Thomas S. Monson made an announcement that would drastically change the church's missionary program. A young man who graduated from high school or his equivalent regardless of where they live, will have the option of being recommended for missionary service beginning at the age of 18. Young women who have the desire to serve may be recommended for missionary service beginning at age 19. And that means students here at the LDS Institute in Logan could be wearing one of these much sooner. It hit me, and then like 10 seconds later, it just hit me in the face. I was like, what? I can go right now. I actually have a missionary out, and so I wasn't planning on going to mission. Um, and then I realized that I could, and so, and serve alongside him, and so it was just such a cool thing. So I wasn't planning on it, and now I totally am planning on it. Students agree that missionary work will be forever changed because of the new policy. I think now, with like all the excitement of now I, I can go now, I think I'm more ready now than I would have been if I had had to wait. I think it's going to change the future of the church in a big way. And they can't wait to be a part of it. I actually am meeting with my bishop tomorrow night to start my papers and then I am not coming back to school next semester and I want to leave. Kelton Wells, ATV News. The church currently has over 58,000 full-time missionaries and expects that number to increase in light of the recent changes. Our provost Raymond Coward is retiring. Here's a look back at what he's done for Utah State University and who will be taking his place. I know what I'm getting into, I think, and uh, I know what will make us happy. Provost Coward has known the last seven years here at Utah State University with busy schedules, interviews, meetings, and events, just to name a few. But where he's headed next will be a little less structured. These jobs are demanding jobs. They're wonderful jobs. I get up every morning and love to come to work. But uh, they're demanding, and at some point in time, you're looking for a different pace of life. President Albrecht knows future Provost Noelle Cockett from her work here in the Agricultural Building. Provost Coward he met when they went to school together at the University of Florida. He applied. I told the search committee I would really 
stay back from the search, that it would be their recommendation. And uh, the search committee at the end of the search recommended that he be our new provost. Raymond Coward has had numerous accomplishments in the last seven years as provost, such as forming new departments and preserving USU's academic programs. The, the willingness really to help people who are new to the academy become integrated and feel a part of the academy. I've always been impressed with that. Noelle Cockett will be replacing Provost Coward and comes with plenty of experience. She has been Dean for the College of Agriculture for 10 years, VP of Extension for six, and served as Interim Provost and Vice Provost. She's not a, a newbie. She, uh, she knows what the job takes and she's certainly up to that uh, challenge. Although many have great confidence in Cockett, Raymond Coward will be missed. There was an old faculty member who's been here a long time, and uh, I heard this strange voice from across the parking lot, and this voice said, You are losing a heck of a guy. Katrina Warburton, ATV News. Provost Coward will officially retire July 1st. He looks forward to spending more time with his kids and grandchildren. After five years of planning and dreaming about a bigger location, the Cache Valley Food Pantry will soon move their cans of food from old boxes to new shelves. Since the 1970s, the Cache Valley Food Pantry has actively served the community. But as years go by, their building is not reaching the workers' wants. Many food items are difficult to find due to lack of shelving, leaving workers and volunteers no choice but to stack food in a maze of boxes. And because of small quarters, when families arrive for food, the line often trails outside into the cold. But all of that is about to change. After a long five-year wait of planning and raising money, the food pantry now has a new building. We really picked a rotten time in the economy to try to do this, but it says a lot for the community that we're able to accomplish something like this in this economy that we're, that we're, that we're in. They hope to move into their new home in the next two weeks. The new building will bring many positive changes, including plenty of shelving space for food and adequate room to bring families inside and out of the cold. We built a huge building. You can see it, it's, it's huge. And it's, uh, even after we, after we move in, we won't fill all the shelves. And that was planned. I don't want to build a building that's going to meet my immediate needs. Uh, hopefully 20, 30 years from now, um, the building will grow into the building. If you would like to support the food pantry, they're always accepting volunteers. Or you can go through your own cupboards at home and donate any canned foods you may have on hand. For now, the new building is full of tools, but the toolboxes will soon be replaced with food and emergency supplies. If you would like to get more involved with the food pantry, the university puts on the Stuff a Bus event starting in November. Proceeds from Stuff a Bus go to both the Cache Valley Community Pantry and the Student Nutrition and Access Center. One popular homecoming week tradition might be missing from the lineup next year. It's been over two weeks since the annual street painting competition, and while the paint is beginning to fade along Aggie Boulevard, it's still very visible in some places where it was never meant to be. Even though precautions were taken by ASUSU to make sure the event went smoothly, several areas of sidewalk, lampposts, and trees were vandalized with paint from the activity. Student leaders are frustrated because they worked very hard to make sure there were no problems this year. While no formal report of vandalism has been filed, ASUSU Traditions Director Sloan Bailey says that she is working with the clubs involved to make sure the damage is cleaned up. She adds that the names of those responsible for the vandalism will be turned over to campus police. Coming up on ATV News, a new building brings the governor to campus. And find out how the Entrepreneur Club can make your ideas come to life. The Copy Center on the first floor of the TSC is open Monday through Friday, 7 to 6, for all your document needs. Let the trained staff help you print important documents. Services include binding, color copies, custom gifts from your favorite photos, and last-minute items like pencils, report covers, and especially Scantrons. The Copy Center. We're here to help. Come to the third floor of the TSC to the Sky Room Restaurant and experience good food for a great price, such as all-you-can-eat soup and rolls for $3.50 or a full buffet for $9.45. Enjoy custom soft drinks and the sounds of live music as you sit back and relax in the friendly environment. The Sky Room. 
open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. USU professors are making a difference in your life inside and outside of the classroom. Brianna Bodily traveled down to Salt Lake City to speak with one professor about how she is changing the lives of some non-traditional students by teaching them a new trade. Brianna? That's right, Carly. And if you take a look at my basket right here, I have some honeydew, some squash, tomatillo, zucchini. These are all fruits and vegetables that you might find in the garden of a special set of students, a group that say they in particular are in need of some good education. I've learned a whole lot about different things out here. Now I can help my mom in the garden. Tyler Hutchings is one of several inmates working at the Salt Lake County Jail. Just locking uh, prisoners up in jail and when they're incarcerated really doesn't do anything for the prisoners. Instead, the jail garden program allows inmates to learn skills and take classes that Dietrich hopes will one day help them step back into society. We teach them different topics of gardening, kind of focused around um, the green industry, uh, so jobs that they might be able to find in the green industry. They're getting jobs either in supermarkets where they're in the produce department, uh, some of them have said, hey, I'm going to go home and I'm going to have help my mom have the best garden ever. But before they can do that, some of these inmates have had to learn gardening from the roots up. Today they're like, this is really how broccoli grows, and you're like, yeah. Can't just go through and just pull stuff and, and cut stuff, and you got to learn different varieties of plants and like what's, what the difference between a weed and a plant is. And they sell the variety of plants and vegetables they grow at a local farmer's market where the inmates have a chance to communicate with local community members. We make the prices, we make the deals, handle the money, and the cops just make sure that we do what we're supposed to do. Lieutenant Dietrich says it is this garden that he sees helping inmates one day get back on their feet. Instead of just locking someone up, they're learning a skill. They're learning something that they can take back, give back to the community, support their families. Outside of the regular produce they sell, the inmates actually have a special set of pumpkins like this one that they set in a reserve patch called the Sheriff's Pumpkin Patch. And these pumpkins go out to different organizations like the School for the Deaf and Blind and the Family Support Center. Just one more way, the jail is helping these inmates give back to the community. Back to you, Carly. Thanks, Brianna. Utah State's new distant education building makes it possible to be an Aggie without having to be in Logan. Steve Crass shows you how you can get an education, how getting an education just got easier. Albrecht is bringing us Moab. Last Wednesday, USU President Stan Albrecht and Utah Governor Gary Herbert cut a ribbon, but it wasn't made from fabric and it didn't involve scissors. It was a virtual ribbon cutting for the university's new tech-packed distance education building, which both Governor Herbert and student Andrew Thompson say is going to make a big difference. Absolutely. There's no question that more technology makes better. They have been at the forefront of distance learning and uh, you know they're continuing to lead out and this is just another example of that here today. Filled with 80 inch touchscreen monitors and the latest smart classroom technology, the building connects students in Logan to those at USU's 25 statewide campuses, giving one instructor the chance to interact with multiple classrooms at once something Thompson is looking forward to. Definitely any time that the professor is more integrated with the students, it's better. All this put together means students have a greater, easier access to a higher education, no matter what part of the state you live in, which Governor Herbert says is nothing short of amazing. The fact that we can actually be teaching a class in Logan and actually have students participating in real time, asking questions, having dialogue back and forth with a teacher in Blanding, Utah, down in San Juan County, is really kind of a modern day miracle. Steve Crass, ATV News. You can see the building for yourself. It's located right on 700 North, right next to the IT building. The next time you have a million dollar idea, but you're not sure how to get started, the Entrepreneur Club may be able to help you out. Jim, we got chalk right here. Today we're having a sidewalk chalk competition. Winner gets 50 bucks, and we're announcing our kickoff event for tomorrow for the Opportunity Quest. Awesome chalk cards for 50 bucks over here. We wanted to get the students involved and pumped about the Entrepreneurship Club. So we decided we'd incorporate the art students and students from all over campus. So it's super fun. We're incorporating our logo into individual chalk art pieces. Entrepreneurship Club is for every school on campus. I mean, if you're an art student and you have an idea for a paintbrush that doesn't get hard, that's totally it. That's a business idea. We want you. We have a kickoff fall event for tomorrow. It's a chance for uh, students with business ideas to uh, 
to kind of articulate the business ideas and, and put them into the competition, uh, into the running to win $5,000. So our registrations are going to be starting tomorrow, to just, just to register to let us know that you're, you have an idea that you're going to put into the competition. Um, the, registration, the registration closes on the day of submission, basically, when you have to submit. Passing out flyers about bratwurst, root beer, pumpkin cookies, you name it, we're having a great time. It's just a way to get more involved in the school and come up with business ideas, start your own business, and have a great time. To find out more about the club, visit huntsman.usu.edu. These days, networking, networking can be the best way to get your foot in the door, even for a journalist, and one group is making that a little easier. To be a journalist, you need connections to help you get started. But how does one establish these connections? Recently, Utah State University's Journalism and Communications Department decided to revive its Society of Professional Journalists chapter. At some point in uh, the fairly recent past, uh, the organization just petered out. And uh, when I came onto campus two years ago, uh, Dr. Pease, the uh, department chair of the Department of Journalism and Communication, asked if I would be interested in uh, helping spark a new chapter here at USU. The Society is the largest organization supporting journalists, both professional and student, across the whole nation. But some may feel that journalism is dying, asking why even bother joining a professional group if you can't get a job in it. In particular, it's very important to the students. It gives them a, an opportunity for professional development, for mentorship, for networking, and also just to be in a, uh, a fraternity of sorts. USU students feel that the Society of Professional Journalists offers something more than just networking. Oh, it's there to protect us, to inform us, to, uh, you know, I would, I would presume to, you know, kind of mainstream uh, what we do. What does having a new chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists do for us? Better paper, and a better paper means a better community. Lauren Brewer, ATV News. <laughs> If you are interested in joining the Society of Professional Journalists, contact Professor Matthew LaPlante. Stick with us because right after this break, Brianna Bodley will have your weather forecast. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Only nude pics. Send me some. Text me. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. and welcome to ATV Weather. I'm going to tell you, if you look outside right now, the weather is great. Barely a cloud in the sky, but I'm going to tell you right now if it is time to get out your ponchos or even break out those winter coats from storage. If we take a look at our air quality right now, right up here in the corner is us right here at 57 particles of air, or of particles per second of air. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. If we look at our uh, precipitation in the air right now, we're right over here. And as you can see, this the, right here is this is a dry tongue of air. This shot right now was taken 24 hours ago. If we look at what it is right now, you can see that the air is actually coming through. The tongue of air is coming through and we're getting some more precipitation. So what does that mean for our five day forecast? First, I think we should take a look at this map right here because it can show right now, if you look at the skies outside, this is what it looks like. Very little precipitation, the, the skies are clear. But just 12 hours from now, at 12 o'clock tonight, if we can move on to that graphic, you'll see that there is a little bit of precipitation moving slowly in towards Utah right here. Um, on Thursday, you can see that there's going to be even more precipitation just a little bit and the wind is blowing it into Utah and on Saturday we're going to skip to that graphic and you will see that the the precipitation will actually hang right over Utah right there. So what does that mean for our five-day forecast? Well if we start right here on Wednesday you'll 
you can see that we're at, we're at a high of 75 today and a low of 38 with barely a cloud in the sky. Moving over to Thursday, 76, it's going to be mostly cloudy, so you'll see a lot of a lot of clouds in the sky, not as much sunshine with a low of 39. We're going to move on to Friday where there's a 30% chance of rain, more clouds in the sky of course with a low of 39 and that's the precipitation we saw coming into the sky over Logan. On Saturday it's going to clear up a little bit less, uh, partly sunny, less clouds in the sky with a high of 68 and a low of 37. And finally on Sunday it's going to finally start warming back up. Our high will be 67 but it will be so sunny. Just wait for that sun and it will get better. Low of 36. That's all for ATV Weather. Aggies, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. So, where are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Hey man, what's up? Man, I got the club, right? I'm with two beautiful girls. We're drunk, man. We're so drunk. You got a ride home or are you driving? Yeah. I'm going to push the Cavalier into gear. Push, push the Cavalier! Oh, no, man, don't drive. I'm on my way. Don't worry, I'll be there in a sec. What's up, Aggies? Welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Meredith Kinney. Friday's 6-3 loss to BYU was tough for Aggie football to swallow, but thanks to a short memory and a quick turnaround, the season goes on. Yeah, there's probably 30 or 40 on each side of the, on each team where when it's that close, you know, um, it's uh, there's going to be a bunch of plays that could have swung it this way or swung it that way or you know really could have swung it either way for the other team to have it kind of get out of hand and uh, not be a close game. So you know you look at it and you know, you know hat goes off to BYU. They made some plays and did some great things. But when you're playing against a great defense and you've got to loosen them up, you got to make plays down the field, and we were able to do that. And the last couple of weeks when we were not able to connect down the field in this last game. Focus on the little things that are like the drop balls and route running and just execution overall. And uh, again, BYU is a good defense, but again, we go against a great defense every day in practice in our defense. And uh, like I said, I, I feel like if we would have executed like I was saying against BYU, things would have came our way. But again, we just had a few drops and a couple of missed opportunities. And um, I mean, that happens. That always happens in games. We knew it was going to go down to the wire with those guys and uh, it just didn't come out on our side. We, we asked the coordinator, or we asked Matt last week, how you could go go through a game and not catch a pass like you did against UNLV. And then the I started white play. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's been a long time waiting, um, trying to get the white championship. So that's the goal, and uh, try to get it. On fans are still reeling from the loss. I thought it was our year. After last year, I thought maybe we could do it this year. I was bummed, but they can do it. I know they can. I'm still feeling happy about Utah State. <laughs> there was no shortage of excitement for Aggie soccer. The ladies scored seven goals in two big whack matchups. <laughs> Noon, the Aggies took on the University of Texas San Antonio. Mari Mayashiro got on board first, putting the ball past the Roadrunners goaltender. In the second half, Jen Flynn broke through and booted the ball, putting the Aggies up 2-0. And with one second left, Libby Lundquist draws a penalty kick. And Natalie Norris finishes off the play. The Aggies won 3-0. Sunday now. Texas State is in town. Lauren Roundy starts off the scoring early in the game. Then Flint again gets in on the action, with a US, giving the USU an early 2-0 lead. Still in the first, Brooke Larson gets her chance. The Aggies had a 3-0 lead at halftime. Wrapping up the offensive weekend is Jade Tarver, who heads the ball into the net. Oh, nice. 
assist on Friday. Kylie had her first assist on Friday. You know, Roundy got her first goal of her career. Oh, really? um, that's her first. That's her first, that's her first goal of her career. Amrin got her first assist of, the, and, and Maris got their first assist of their careers. So we were just really excited that so many people stepped up. That one, our our tech was diverse, and we had a lot of people contribute to it, and that we had a lot of first timers contribute to it and step up in that way. This whole weekend, we've definitely stepped up a lot. Um, we uh, we definitely knew going into it, we needed to win 50-50 balls, and that sit, that was huge for us going into the attack because by us getting the 50-50 balls, we were able to possess in the um, third and be able to go forward. So it was definitely good. It feels so great because that's what we've been striving for all season. We've been trying to put all the pieces together, and you know we've been playing really great, and we've had a lot of possession, but. This weekend we, you know, put everything together and got goals with that possession. So, and we've been working a lot with that on practice, in practice, so. Aggie soccer is on the road this week, still riding high. They are looking for more big wins. Aggie hockey killed it this weekend on their Colorado road trip. The skaters got out their brooms and swept Denver University, Colorado State University, and the University of Colorado. US now, USU is now 5-0 and oh, and in great position for next week when a tough-minded Arizona State comes to Logan ready to defend their title of number one in the West. That's it for ATV Sports. We'll be right back with more ATV News. The Copy Center on the first floor of the TSC is open Monday through Friday 7-6 to 6, for all your document needs. Let the trained staff help you print important documents. Services include binding, color copies, custom gifts from your favorite photos, and last-minute items like pencils, report covers, and especially Scantrons. The Copy Center. We're here to help. It takes one engineer to design a road and two to make a sandwich. At the Triple Beam Bakery, the signature Marv and Joe sandwich is causing quite a stir. Romina Nadakovich took a bite out of this story. Can I get a Marvin Joe, please? The Marvin Joe sandwich is not just any sandwich. It's a signature at the Triple Beam Bakery in the Hub. And it began with a run. Joe Caliendo and myself used to go for runs at lunchtime. And after our run, we would come here and order a slice of hazel bread. Started over 15 years ago by Marv and Joe, it has stuck around since. Well, it was all because of Dr. Caliendo, Dr. Joe. He said, I don't just like just the regular piece of bread, I would like something a little special. Something special is a slice of Hazel's bread and some garlic butter, then salt and pepper, oil and vinegar, two tomatoes, provolone cheese, and Parmesan cheese. Toasting the Marvin Joe is the finishing touch. After your Marvin Joe is out of the toaster, you get to try a bite of tradition. The bakery also provides bagels, cookies, donuts, and pastries, but nothing is as special as the Marvin Joe. It doesn't have any meat on it. It's a, veg it's a vegan, eh, it's not vegan friendly, it's vegetarian friendly. It's good and good for you. Students like it because... It's like fruity and salty and cheesy and vinegar. It's just, it's good. I don't really like sweets, but I like tomatoes and I really like garlic bread. If you have a sweet tooth or just want some butter on your bread, there's a little bit of everything. Romina Nadakovic, ATV News. The Marvin Joe is $2.55, costing less than the average sandwich. Stray animals are usually no surprise, unless that stray is an African tortoise. It was quite the day for this guy when he decided to take a trip to see the world, or at least Logan City. Julia Williams ran into the African spurred tortoise Monday morning on 200 North and 250 East. The tortoise had escaped from its owners and made it about a half a block before animal control picked him up near the LDS temple. Officers brought the tortoise to the Willow Park Zoo, where its owner, Curtis Baird, claimed the claimed the reptile. Police say the tortoise was friendly and offered no harm to people. The tortoise is 21 years old and weighs about 275 pounds. Well, from all of us here at ATV News, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.